Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with WDSE and WRPT in Duluth, Minnesota. Today we are chatting with Jim Christmas, President and CEO of North Homes Children and Family Services. Jim has generously agreed to share some of his experience with us. I'd like to thank you for joining us today, Jim. You're quite welcome, Mark. Talk about how you founded this organization and the need that you saw back in 1991. Well, I just prior to uh, founding North Homes Children and Family Services, I worked for Itasca County up here in northern Minnesota uh, as a child protection worker. So I was charged, as, as many were, with investigating child abuse, neglect, maltreatment, incorrigibility of, of children from their families. Um, and through the course of that work, I saw tremendous gaps in service, particularly in rural areas. Kids were being shipped far away from home for foster care, residential treatment, and other services that they needed far away from their families and their local resources. Um, so our charge, our mission right out of the gate in 1990 was to uh, set up a care continuum in Itasca County initially in Grand Rapids um, to treat kids and catch kids where they're at and provide more local options for them when they're experiencing difficulties with behavior and mental health and delinquency. And it's important for people to understand the daily life of a caseworker. You get a call, you get an assignment. Mm -hmm. Frequently the calls are coming in from, from some other operating unit and you go out with very scant information. Talk about what you encounter as you come in with perhaps a one sheet of paper summary there was some call, some report, uh, some issue, and then you go out, and, and what do you actually encounter? Well, it's all over the board, Mark, as you can well imagine. Um, initially, you're screening, so you're making some, some preliminary judgments regarding risk, right. um, and that can be um, tricky, um, and not exactly, sometimes an exact science, um, but you make your, make your best judgment and work as a team, and, and um, and screen those concerns that may come in regarding child welfare. Um, and then off you go. And sometimes it's with law enforcement um, to assess the situation, to visit with the family. If it's a, uh, a neglect concern uh, regarding, say, a, a youngster not coming to school adequately clothed or, clothed or hungry, or maybe there's a maltreatment concern regarding um, some potential physical abuse, sexual abuse you go in with those eyes and you make some uh, adjustments and you err on the side of caution in terms of protecting the child. Um, that being said, you're always cognizant of making sure and realizing that that family, more often than not, is that child's most important resource. So therein lies the, the challenge. <laughs> How do you go through that, that transformation from the initial or that process of the initial notice all the way through the experience and then through to a decision? And how do you train people today with reference to your own personal experience and the experience of others to make sure that those decisions and those acts are always as close to the interest of the child as humanly possible? Over the years, and it's been 30 years <laughs> since I've been a child protection worker, uh, but I certainly work, uh, and our organization works closely with Child Protective Services. So in terms of what their exact trainings are right now, uh, I know that they've greatly improved. And it's a triage uh, from a standpoint of, you know, is there eminent risk right now um, in terms of what would necessitate an immediate child removal? And that could be and, and should be a temporary and then is ultimately determined by the courts. Um, if there is a, a need for out-of-home care, uh, alternative placement, termination of parental rights, those types of serious interventions. Um, but it is a team, um, and um, it is a, a careful process that is never taken lightly. Um, and, you know, it, it, it can range from, um, you know, a single mom who's, you know, struggling to manage the store, <laughs> Make ends um, who, who la makes ends meet, lacks some of the parenting skills, and then it's a matter of, hey, how can we help you 
do this, right. and that can be plugging in, and it's one of the service elements that North Homes offers, is in-home uh, counseling services and parenting skill development and child supports in the home, in the family. So that's one of the less restrictive, and then up, off you go from there. And typically, if it's a child removal, it happens through the court system. And how many people do you serve on an annual basis? We serve about, over our continuum, which has grown significantly over these years, uh, about 3,200 children. 3,200 children? A year. And this is a people intensive business. How many staff do you have? We have about 325 FTEs. Um, and that doesn't include our foster care providers, which is about another 125. So full-time equivalent about 330 and about 125 foster care providers as well. Correct. And in terms of, of the entire uh, ecosystem there, you're, you're functioning in an environment where you're interacting with state actors, yep. uh, you're interacting with private citizens, yep. you're interacting with family members. Very often the family member ends up becoming another family member, ends up becoming the care provider for the child as well. Correct. And often when, when there is a resolution, it doesn't go into a foster care situation, but there is still some caring arrangement that is, that is developed right. in part through your negotiation yeah. intercession. And it's really centered to our mission, treating children in the context of family and community is core to our mission. Um, so we, again, really strongly believe, even though it doesn't look real great on the surface sometimes with a family, that family is, is the, the child's best shot, typically, not always. <laughs> How do you ensure that you are capable of dealing with the cultural issues and the different problems that, that you confront? How do you recruit people to ensure that you have the cultural competencies mm -hmm. to serve these, th th this very diverse community here and around uh, in, in, in Minnesota? Our uh, primary minority group that we work with are Native American. Mm -hmm. um, we work with about, in terms of our, our total um, what, client population, uh, roughly 20% Native. Um, and we work extremely hard um, with the tribes, um, Red Lake, White Earth, Leech Lake, Fond du Lac, Mille Lacs, um, in um, trying to provide as culturally competent of a staffing component and um, cultural options for them to have in terms of foster care, in terms of the counseling approach, in terms of the cultural sensitivity that is unique to all cultures. Um, that said, you don't bat a thousand. <laughs> right. um, you know, we just, we, it's, it's a work in progress, and it probably always will be to make sure that we're doing the work as culturally competent as possible. In terms of, of the services that you provide, uh, let's start breaking them down by categories of service. I mean, there is foster care, which is a, a big component of what you do, but talk about the whole range of different services and also the range of children need Mm -hmm. of children and family need that you actually mm -hmm. address even if you don't provide the services yourself? Sure. So starting with foster care, um, as, I, as I mentioned, we have about 125, I believe, foster families um, who are, are trained specific to take care of um, children with complex mental health issues, child welfare issues. So some of those foster placements are short-term, emergency-based. Some of them are longer-term care for, for kids who have, have uh, more long-term needs. Um, and then along with foster care is adoption. Um, and we offer uh, adoptive services for Minnesota waiting children. I'm super proud to report <laughs> that we um, facilitated approximately 40 uh, permanency placements for uh, Minnesota waiting children last year. Puts us up in, in sort of the forefront of the leaders in the state. And, and that really strikes to our mission's end game in terms of providing permanency for kids who otherwise are bouncing around the system, um, sometimes unnecessarily. Um, and sort of backing down from that a little bit in terms of less restrictive um, outpatient services, we offer that in-home in program that I talked about mm -hmm. in terms of uh, working with families to keep kids at home or to help them in reunification. Um, and we also have um, actually three outpatient mental health clinics in Grand Rapids, Bemidji, and then here in Duluth as well. 
And mental health uh, frequently deals with, um, with multiply diagnosed uh, conditions. There can be um, uh, uh, certainly um, issues of addiction. There can be uh, issues of, of attention deficit. There can be uh, issues of uh, behavioral issues, mm -hmm. anger management, those kinds of issues. Yep. <laughs> yeah. All, all, that, all, of, all of the above and, <laughs> yeah, and, and much some, more. And much, much, much more. more. Yeah. So it's, um, it's basically a, a community um, counseling center. Um, right. um, and, and again, we have three locations for those with, with therapists. Um, and then out of those uh, outpatient clinics, um, is our school-based mental health program, uh -huh. which has grown tremendously and, and, and I, for really important reasons. Um, we have mental health practitioners and professionals in about 32 schools up here in the Northland. So you have very strong relationships with the school systems and with, the, with health providers, and of course with law enforcement and with, with state authorities as well. Mm -hmm. We also provide um, residential treatment um, and one of the Itaskin Center in Grand Rapids, which is one of our initial programs, is a crisis stabilization unit for it's 28 beds for kids who are in short-term, interim emergency care. Right, and that it can be all over the board in terms of why they might come through your your door in that level. But typically, whatever's going on is uh, in conjunction with some behavioral challenges mm -hmm. that require 24/7 care. So we have 20, 28 beds, and then we do an assessment unit. Uh, in conjunction with that, figure out what's what's cooking <laughs> and um, where the problems are and what kind of interventions can happen at that point. Um, and then we have in that building a 13-bed intensive residential treatment program. Then right next door in a Grand Rapids campus, we have a 20-bed residential treatment cottage for serious emotionally disturbed children. And then in Bemidji, um, we have our outpatient mental health center. Um, we also, in, here in Duluth and also in Itasca and Beltrami counties, work with the Safe Harbor program for se sexually exploited young ladies, um, both in the case management side of things um, and doing skills work with them. And then we also have a safe house in Bemidji for, uh, for young ladies who have been sexually exploited. Well, thank you, Jim Christmas, President and CEO of North Homes Children and Family Services, for your work on behalf of children and families. And thank you so much for your insights. Thank you, Mark. Pleasure being here.